Hey, Battle Community, how's it going? We're here with another Thursday night top 10 special. And if you can't tell already, judging by the attire of some of our participants, we are going to be talking about Kiss, but not just any Kiss. We're going to be doing our top 10 songs of the 1970s. So basically the first album through Dynasty, uh, we have picked our top 10. Uh, Chris is going to be joining us uh, in a little while. He's getting a little bit of a late start. And one of the things that um, we've decided to do, and we're letting you in on the joke early, is when Chris drops in, he doesn't know it, but we're going to shift gears and we're going to pretend that we're talking about our Duran Duran top 10 and see how long it takes him to call us out on it. Um, so anyway, for all intents and purposes, Chris thinks we're still doing the Kiss video, which we are, but uh we'll have a little fun with them when he drops in so uh hope you guys are doing well welcome yes. to the program Thank gentlemen you. doing well nice um, to be here yeah we were just talking before we started rolling tape about how difficult it was to pull together a list of 10 because um you know there's so much great music in the 1970s it's really hard just to whittle it down to 10 um, although Aaron, you said before, you're pretty confident in your list. Your top 10 is your top 10 and you never had any, uh, misgivings about any thing that you That's have. Awesome. Really so, <laughs> yeah, which I, I admire that. I'm a little surprised, but very cool. <laughs> All right. So let's start with our number 10. Um, Gary, you want to kick things off? Yep. Number 10. Uh, and, and you know, like you said, this is nearly impossible to do for me. I love, love 70s era kiss. But anyway, start out on number 10. This comes off of the uh, famous side four of Kiss Alive 2. And it is larger than life. I just think it's a, yep, it's a fantastic uh, Gene Simmons song. I know it's not ace on guitar, but everything else about it sounds great. I love the uh, stutter drum beat on there and the guitar. It's just an ass kicking song. And I love everything about it. That's my number 10. Great pick. Thanks. Very cool. Yep. Love that yeah, I almost forget about that side. You know, when I'm thinking of studio albums or studio songs, I always forget the side four of that <laughs> record is all studio stuff, but it's got some great stuff on there. Yeah, it does. So um, when, when what happened was I wasn't even going to do this show with you guys. But I, was saying, I always try to take a few weeks off here and there. And when he said kiss, I got drunk on my Tipsy Tuesday and I got a little extra drunk and I talked my wife into letting me do it. So I just went and in about five seconds wrote down my top 10 Kiss songs from the 70s. And um, I don't know why. I love every song from the 70s. Every single one. I don't even have even any way you want it. And then she kissed me. I like, I mean, I love every one of them. But I just have certain ones that have always been my favorites for years. And so it only, and then I went back and I listened to every one of them, put them on record just to make sure. And I was like, everyone, yep, that's it. That's it. And I knew it was it. So Usually I have a top 50. I could have done a top 100, but I, I did my top 10 was easy for some reason. And starting out with number 10 with the song Watching You, one of the heaviest mm -hmm. Kiss songs. I just love the groove. It's really good on the live record, too. Maybe even better. But, you know, I, a lot of people complain about the production on Hotter Than Hell. I like the raw sound of it. And I, I actually think it adds to it, the different sound. And Watching You has always been one of my favorite Kiss songs. It's just like got that heavy groove and absolutely one of my favorites so watching you number 10 excellent um so my number 10 when i was a kid i discovered kiss through kiss alive in my dad's album collection so i that was the first kiss i ever heard um and then you know i just stared at the pictures and i always thought ace Frehley was super cool like he was just the coolest of the bunch and uh so i love the song shock me you know shock me make me feel better it's just such a killer song uh i loved it the first time i heard it i love it just as much now um so that's my number 10 shock me awesome song. yeah i was surprised like how many ace freely compositions um 
you know, I either considered as part of my list or actually ended up on my list. But he was very prolific, especially during that period of Love Gun. Um, you know, Love Gun and even on, um, you know, Dynasty, he was coming up, he was demoing, uh, you know, a handful of great songs back then, um, even so. Uh, and he was singing on them too. You know, the early stuff he didn't sing on because he didn't have the, the confidence in his voice until Gene Simmons kind of encouraged him to take a crack at it but um very cool um my top 10 is gonna be on an album this week as i was listening to it i'm like god i love this album and yet i know a lot of people don't regard it all that highly just in terms of their early albums but um i'm gonna go with love her all i can um yeah. off of here i love that bass groove uh, on there, near, 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 near. Yeah, I mean that song yeah. swings. Uh, it does. Nice, but uh, yeah, I I love it, and I mean I you know pretty much at that point because I'm so tired of rock and roll all night. I kind of you know lift the needle off the record after that song's over with, and I don't bother with uh, you know rock and roll all night but yeah i think it's a fantastic track and it just shows you know i mean they could do so many different styles well you know in a song like that which is different from i think anything they had uh recorded up to that point um you know just shows how how kick-ass kind of like a boogie rock band they could be yeah i i think most i don't know i always feel like most kiss bands really like dress to kill um <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I love it. And I also think that was uh, the album where the production started to step up a bit. You know, it has a, a better sound than the, the first two, depending on how you're looking at it. I, I agree with what Aaron says, too. I do think that part of that sound that Hotter Than Hell has kind of adds to that. But I definitely I think I think the production on Dress to Kill is great. I love it. It sounds like a great 70s record. And that song, Love Her All I Can, I also think that's a really good uh, demonstration of Peter Chris, uh, what he can do on drums. Because, you know, Peter Chris is always like, you know, they always say, oh, he's a shitty drummer and everything. And, and he did go downhill. Uh, but I, I think that's a, an, a good example of what he could do on drums. Yeah, and I, I doubt anybody's going to have this. I doubt anybody's got rock and roll all night on their list, so I can talk about it but a little bit. But, you know, rock and roll all night was not a hit off that album. Um, it wasn't until the Alive version came out that it became like the smash hit. But, you know, I mean, Casablanca Records was on the ropes even after Kiss put out that album. And if, they, if Kiss hadn't put out Alive, I mean, I got to imagine Casablanca Records was probably circling the drain and wouldn't have been around much longer. But... Uh, I think it's a fantastic album, and I, I think it definitely, uh, you know, kind of pointed the way to an album like Destroyer a little bit. But um, I, I still, yeah, it's maybe not I, maybe not my favorite of the first three albums, but I would say it's I like it better than um, Hotter Than Hell. I'll put that out there. So anyway, we're not here to talk about albums. Like all three are. Yeah, I, I have a hard time with those. I like the production of Dress to Kill the best. Um, but, ah, man, I don't know. The song's on Hotter Than Hell. Or, <laughs> so All three um, are fantastic. Well, that's a debate for another video. But yeah. uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll move on to number nine. Number nine for me uh, is off of one of my favorite Kiss albums, Rock and Roll Over. And it's Baby Driver. This is a Peter Chris vocal. Now, you know, Peter Chris, obviously, he was a drummer and that was it. <laughs> he didn't play guitar or anything. So, you know, he would have to have a co writer come in and help him. And from what I understand, with that particular song, Gene and Paul kind of helped construct it and turn it into a song. I don't know. I don't care who did what. All I know is that it is a great kick-ass song. It almost sounds like a Jimi Hendrix kind of song in a way. Uh, I love the guitar on that. And Peter's vocal is fantastic. Uh, those screams that Peter Chris had and those, you know, those 
first six Kiss records are just awesome. And I love Baby Driver. Great song. Going on down the road. <laughs> yeah, that song almost made my list. It's a fantastic song. I like the driving rhythm of it, too. Just like... <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Dinosaur. Simon, Simon and Garfunkel had a song called um, Baby Driver, but it's not anywhere near as heavy. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> right. My number nine. Beth. <laughs> oh. Comes to this again. And it's, we're going Peter Chris again, Strange Ways. It was one of my favorite yeah. guitar solos of all time. Just that song is just so heavy and dirty. And I just love it. I love the lyrics. Uh, Ace was the co-writer on it. So like you were saying, Ace with his writing. And just Strange Ways has always been one of my favorites. It's just so killer. And uh, you know, it, I'm surprised it wasn't actually higher on my list because I love that song. And Peter Chris singing it. It's one of my favorites that he sang, for sure. Cool. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. a great one. All right, my next one, my number nine is going to be off this bad, Larry, and it's Rock Bottom, which I I just can't get enough of this song. I've never gotten sick of this song. I just love the, you know, how the song begins, and then once Paul kicks in, he's like, I can't. And it's like you just instantly start feeling that groove. It's like, I can't wait a day. Yeah, it's so good. And, uh, you know, it's funny is that what I love about those early albums, just like you guys pointed out, was the songs were so different, you know, like uh, the Peter Chris songs and the Ace songs and the Paul songs and the Gene songs. Um, there was simplicity to some of it, but it worked. Uh, and Rock Bottom, I think, is a masterpiece. And it's one of the reasons why I love this album so much. And it's cool. It's like this once the that guitar intro, uh, yeah. you know, Ace and Paul playing, playing together is done and the actual song comes in it's really short <laughs> yeah. it's a really short song <laughs> and when it's done you're like oh man i want to hear that again that, that yeah. just kicks ass you know it's exactly. like listening to a ramon song or something it's awesome yeah i love it all right gosh great one your turn jeff oh <laughs> I'm like I've lost track. I'm like, oh, when's somebody it's gonna go? Yeah. Uh, Thanks for Duran paying attention. Well. I knew you were thinking about your Duran Duran. Yeah, <laughs> no. Oh my. All right, I'm out to lunch. Okay, mine is, uh, and I don't know, people are gonna roll their eyes at this one, but they do roll their eyes at me all the time anyway, so I'm used to it. Um, but I'm gonna go with um, calling Doctor Love off of here i don't know i like it i love the harmonies on it i love yeah. gene's vocal uh I, you know it's catchy it's just like an earworm and it's one of the earliest kiss songs i remember hearing on the radio and digging um so yeah i make no apologies about it i, I think it's a well-crafted bit of pop rock and um yeah and it's got cowbell yeah, yeah. It does. well, I mean, I what? How can you shit on a song with cowbell? And I like the version <laughs> on uh, Double Platinum, where they start out and you hear them go, "Calling Doctor Love." <laughs> oh yeah, it goes. <clears throat> that's great. So that's uh, a great. Riff. A kid, that... Go ahead, Aaron. What would you say? I just said that's a great riff in that song. Oh yeah, when I was Man. a kid, that was my favorite. Kiss song. Well, wasn't, it, wasn't it a Wicked Lester song? I don't, I don't know, know if about, Dr. Love was. I don't know. There's a few. I don't think that was one of them. I don't think yeah, that. Right. I love the. I love Ace's solo in that song too. Mm -hmm. That's that's a killer one. Okay. Uh, speaking of Wicked Lester, so <laughs> this is a remake of a Wicked Lester song. She. They decided mm. to take all the flutes and shit out of it and just turn <laughs> it just turn it into a rocking song. And man, you know, the version on Dress to Kill is awesome. And the version on Alive is just killer. And they add that part of that uh, I can't remember now what they called it. 
but you know at the end they add that song that they were doing way back when they were playing the diplomat you know just and the way they add that in at the end of she it is just great the harmonies in that song everything about it man it is just one of those driving songs and that part there towards the end where it's just the bass and the drums and peter's just hitting the tom toms It's like, hey, they all of a sudden, this, this sounds like this could be a song from war <laughs> for a second there, you know. <laughs> then the guitar comes back in. <laughs> it's just awesome. She is my number eight. She walks Great by pick. me. Because my Fantastic number eight. Fantastic pick. Yeah, my number eight is she. Yeah. <laughs> I really <laughs> love that song. And uh, is that Acrobat that they use the end of? Yes, yes, thank you. Yep, but yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's almost, it's not progressive, but it's got these, just these elements to it that are really unique for Kiss. I just love yeah. she. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, when someone that doesn't like Kiss comes over to my house, you know, and I go, I'll put, I won't tell them it's a Kiss song, I'll put she on. Oh, this is pretty cool. What is this? <laughs> and it's that's, she. That's an this excellent point. And, yeah. Uh, it's, nice pick for number eight. <laughs> the monkeys had a song called she but it's not as heavy yep. as that one the, the misfits have a though. song called she also um so you guys aren't going to believe this but my number <laughs> eight is she um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I absolutely love this song there's a simplicity to it like the, what i love about the early gene songs is lyrically it's almost like the beatles songs where the, they're they're not very complex lyrically you, you never feel with the gene song that he's cramming words in and trying to make it fit and i'll, I'll give you examples of that later where, where which i love but with gene he doesn't do that and you're absolutely right gary when i listen to the studio version i'm like oh where's that part at the end i want that <laughs> part at the end i mean that's like my favorite part but um you know, it's just heavy. It's a riff-driven song. Um, you know, Aaron mentioned Watching You earlier, which is a very yeah. similar song to me, and that's going to make my list. I'll talk about it later. But um, she is easily was one of my number one songs. Like, th this made the list so quickly. So, yeah. The drumming's great on it, too. The drumming she. is great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that wouldn't, you know, you would have to think how you were going to play that song. If you were the drummer and, you know, they just brought the guitar riff to you, you'd kind of have to say, all right, how am I going to play through this? You know, because you don't really play exactly with the music, if, mm -hmm. you know. So anyway. So it makes it so good. Yeah. Well, you're not going to believe this, <laughs> but she is not my... <laughs> uh, God damn it, Jeff. Yeah. No, I'm gonna go with uh God of Thunder off of there. Um, you know, you uh, and it's easy to think that it's a song that Gene wrote, which obviously it's a Paul Stanley song, but I think it's so associated with Gene that you know it's easy to uh, have that impression but yeah it's just I, I you know I just love kind of the the way that it starts almost like kind of a funeral dirge or something like nah, 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 nah. you know and it's just like it's so it's so, like the perfect vehicle for Gene to just kind of be Gene you know and it's like there in all of his full glory and the bravado of it all and just kind of the sleaziness of it as well I, I think is great it's just like his signature song even though he didn't write it but um yeah I mean I had to put this on here and there were you know other songs I could have picked but I'm like god of thunder I mean you just have to have it in a, a kiss top 10 list so that's my number eight Cool. That's one where you, he would always spit blood. Yeah. That song. yeah. You're right. It was like a signature song. I like that version on Kiss Alive too, because it's like a combination of the Destroyer version and of Paul's original demo version. It's like they kind of mm. combined them, you know, because they speed it up 
from the destroyer which is what paul originally had that song much faster and bob ezrin said hey how about we slow this thing down mm -hmm. which was a good idea i mean you know, yeah it made it more evil <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like it's like a menacing yeah. i mean it is a menacing song you know i mean mm -hmm. it just kind of comes out of those speakers and you got some weird stuff going on in the background i think they're actually you can hear somebody's kids at the beginning bob of that Ezrin's song kids. Yeah, 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 Bob Ezrin's kids. You can hear them somehow. They, they their like voices leaked into the. I don't think it was intentional. I think they just happened to be like their voices bled onto the microphone or whatever that they were recording on. But um, it was intentional. He he added that in. Did he? Okay, I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love the beginning where you hear the little kids. They go, "All right, now let's start singing." Yeah, for menacing kiss songs, that's right up there with War Machine for the two of kisses. They're probably the most for me. Yeah. Yeah. That and maybe Unholy. Okay. Yeah, Unholy's yeah. there too. That's a good one too. Okay. My next pick, and I'll be surprised if any of you guys have this on here, but I could be wrong. But it's just one I think when when I think of a good 70s song with a a good riff to it and everything. Is another one off of rock and roll over, and it's Take Me. Mm. I just always like that song. The words are, you know, ones that Josh would make fun of, but it's so, you know, it <laughs> starts out, put your hand in my pocket, grab onto my rocket, feel so good to see you, Lucille. <laughs> it's like, but that draw, you know, da -na 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 take me any way you want it it's just such a great rocking song and you know to me it sounds like you know i mean that that sounds like a great fog hat song or, or you know or something else from the 70s and i always felt like that song could have been a hit or you know oh, yeah. it's like one of those yeah. songs that you know, how was this not released on the fm radio or something why was this song just you know, they don't even play it live. Uh, you know, I've never, I've never understood that, but I think it's a great song. I love it. I am I still it. looking at the version of Live 2 with that on it. There was uh, uh, some weird copies of Live 2 with Take Me on it. It's an oddity. Yeah, I, I've listened to that on YouTube. Like, you can find all those, those original versions, and I'm like, yeah, that, sh that should have been on there, man. That'd be great live. Yeah, where's this super deluxe of Kiss Alive 2? With the extra how is, track. Yeah. How is it not out yet? I'll buy that. Yeah, if you ever see that in a while, it says take me on the back of the live too, grab it. It's worth some money. Yeah. But plus it'd be cool to hear it take me on there. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't sell it. Well, I that right now. Is it no. actually on there though, or was it just listed? I think there was both, if I remember right. I'm not positive, but I think they had ones that were just listed, and there was ones with it actually on there too, I believe. But I might be wrong on that. I've never owned yeah, it. So I yeah, I haven't either. I I just I I thought I saw that they had like there were ones that got released that it was the same records, but they had the wrong track listing. Oh, well, I still want it. Oh, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. All right. Well, my number seven, one of the heaviest Kiss songs, "Parasite." Ace fairly written. Love it. Love uh, how Anthrax does it, but I like Kisses better. <laughs> you know, it's and I love hearing how Ace sings it on his uh, Origins album. That's really cool hearing him sing it. And it's just yeah. always that's one of those songs that just get you so pumped up when you hear that that guitar riff. That might be my favorite guitar riff of the seventies. Well, that and maybe a Deep Purple, maybe, but that's an amazing, just wow, Parasite. When you hear that guitar, guitar come on, it's just uh, instant energy and. Uh, Number seven, Parasite. So, Aaron, it's like that G boogie, bro. Like it's going to show up again, Eric. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's going to show up again. Say, I, I don't want to talk too much about it, but yeah. it's, yeah. I mean, it's another boogie rock <laughs> song. You know, it's got a nice groove to it. And yeah. I'll tell you that Gene and Paul both said they prefer the Anthrax version. And when they play it really? live, they play it more like Anthrax now. Yeah, you can Google it. They love the Anthrax version. Oh, it's, it's um, great. Okay, so my number seven is going to be Rip It Out 
on the Ace Fraley solo album. I know it's a solo album, but it says Kiss, so I'm going with it. Oh, um, you <laughs> tricky devil. Oh. But it's such a fantastic song. And this, to me, reminds me, it's the closest to what you later get with Fraley, with mm. Fraley's Comet and his later albums. It, it very much sounds like that. And it's the complete opposite of the last song I picked, where, like I said, there's a lot more lyrics in this. It's like, it, you know, it, he's talking about a broken heart, but it doesn't sound like a sad song, you know? And he's like, watch me cry. It's like, okay. <laughs> you know, it sounds more angry than, than he's going to cry, but uh, it's a fantastic song and I love it. And uh, yeah, it's my number seven. I love that part. I hope you suffer. When it says this, just goes exactly. out. Yeah. Suffer. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Anton Big. Yeah. yeah that's that's a great song. It's That's a, a fantastic song. album. I could have put any song from yeah. that album on this list. It's a, yeah. it's a great But I, I could have put Paul Stanley's Tonight You Belong to Me on this list, too. That's a great one as far as solo stuff. Yep. You're right, sneaky, one, uh, Josh. You're sneaky. Thank you. <laughs> I had to be honest. That's my favorite. No, it's awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, what are we at? Number seven? Um. Yeah. I'm going with tossing and turning uh, Peter's. So, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I'm going to go with um, the song 2000 Man of oh, nice. um, Dynasty. And I, I'm a die, die Hard Rolling Stones fan. And I'm sorry, the Kiss version blows away the Rolling Stones version off Satanic Majesty's Request. It's not even close. I mean, Ace Freely brought that song. It was his idea. It was his reinterpretation of that. But thank God, because, I mean, he really showed uh, how the song should have been recorded. If the Rolling Stones had recorded it that way, it would have been 100 times cooler and people probably would regard um that rolling stones album uh, a bit more than they do but yeah i just love it i mean he turns it into an ace freely song it's not a rolling stone song anymore yeah and he yeah. just puts that you know it's got balls now after you know after the kiss recorded it um but i love it I, I think it's fantastic i love the dynasty album it is in my top five and that is a standout track even though it's a cover but it's just a fantastic uh version of of that song and i love it yeah absolutely i, the first, I feel the same like, way i'm a huge rolling stones fan and that that remake blows away the stones and it's to me that is one of my favorite remakes it's like you know we talk about like you know johnny cash doing songs like hurt where he makes them his own ace made that song his own man yeah yeah and I like the unplugged version as well. I like the unplugged oh, version yeah. too. I think it's really cool to hear it uh, in that setting, also. Absolutely. All right. All right. We're on number six now. Okay. Well, since we're on the topic of Mr. Paul Ace Fraley, how about another song off of Kiss Alive 2? And it's Rocket Ride. Nice. This is just a badass song by Ace. You know, I mean, so all we had ever heard was him singing Shock Me, you know, and then this comes out and then you hear him singing Rocket Ride and you're like, what the hell? Why wasn't he singing songs the whole time? And then, so probably hey, Chris. my number seven, hey, my number seven Duran Duran song is the title track off of this one here, uh, Future Past. I think this is very cool. It's very moody. Um, I think the vocals on it are awesome. And it's probably my favorite song off of this album. And thanks to Jeff for inspiring me to buy it. Well, you know, it reminded me of, um, you know, I know I did this for my um, number eight pick. But it reminds me a lot of uh, New Moon on Monday, a Ooh. little bit. So, <laughs> um, yeah, very cool. I hate right, Duran Duran. Your next, what? I hate what? Duran Duran. Oh. Hey, Chris. What's up, guys? Hey. 
No, I'm just kidding. Rio, Rio is an Rio is an awesome album. I actually thought we were doing Judas Priest tonight. No, well, well, we, we, we switched it up. It up. Yeah, oh. we switched it up. Um, and we didn't know if you were going to be here or not. So yeah, all right. So all right, all right. Well, all kidding aside, we just wanted to uh, <laughs> give Chris uh, a little uh, walk. You guys are that was episode. quick. You guys were quick yeah. though. That, that was fast. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait a shift gear. Okay, so Gary, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead and uh, continue on with your real number six pick. Sorry. Okay. So anyway, like I said, it was it was Rocket Ride. Uh, I know that that's pretty much more just Ace than the whole band, but uh, I, you know, it to me, it's another like Shock Me. It's another one of his signature songs, and uh, it's got a great solo. I love the ending of it. Uh, you know, where he, da, 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 and then the drums are all beating all crazy, and it's just it's just a great song. His vocals are cool. It's about entering a black hole. Ooh. All right. Yeah, well, it's weird because you don't normally associate Ace with kind of like outer space themes and stuff like that. So it was really <laughs> him stepping out of, out of his comfort zone to talk about some science fiction uh, type material. But um, right. since Chris has joined us, Chris, um, we're on number six right now. Um, okay. But I think the order we're going to go in just because it's easier for me to keep track of is... Um, you know, Chris, if you want to do your 10 through six right now, and then we'll continue yeah. with the order that we had before. Yeah, very quickly, because uh, thank you guys. Sorry, I'm late. So uh, this is awesome. And I'm, I'm, I love Duran Duran, but I'm happy that we're actually doing Kiss. So this is good. <laughs> All right. My number 10 off of Dynasty is Dirty Living. Uh, Ooh, Peter nice. Chris tune. Have always loved that song. Uh, kind of a, a deeper cut, but love that song um number nine off my favorite kiss record love gun i'm going with almost human yeah and i was listening nice. to it today it's got sort of like a tribal beat to it sort of like a funkiness and uh yeah just just a really cool song uh number eight i think gary was just talking about this rocket ride and uh you know because Love Gun was our introduction to Ace Fraley with uh, Shock Me. And we're, we're like, oh my God, Ace can sing. And, and I always wondered why they didn't let Ace sing earlier. But, uh, you know, at least we got Shock Me and Rocket Ride and his solo record and a lot of other stuff. But uh, let's see, 10, 9, Chris, eight. I got to say, before you get through the next one, that album looks in fantastic shape. Is that? Yeah, you that? know, I got this from somebody named uh, Jeff Witcher actually oh, we got to have him on here one of these weeks yeah <laughs> no it was cool i don't know he's, he's kind of a jerk but yeah <laughs> we can try it i've never had this album to show and now i finally have it to show so thank you this is this is awesome this is a this is a kick-ass record too it is um i love the packaging on it too 10 9 8 i'm doing the math in my head here all right seven i'm showing dynasty a lot i love this freaking record I'm going with Magic Touch. Ooh. Just a great Paul Stanley song. Um, I wanted to pick Sure Know Something because I like that song too, but I think I like Magic Touch just a little bit better. And let's see, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. This is my sixth. I don't know if anybody's mentioned this yet, but Black Diamond. And I was thinking in the car today when I was listening to this again, I love how... Paul Stanley opens it up and then mm -hmm. Peter Chris comes in. So it's almost like kisses a day in the life a little bit, you know, I know that's a stretch, but. <laughs> not really. Uh, no, not really. And I'll talk about it later on tonight. Yeah. Uh, so, Hey, I'm all caught up and I've even right. got, the, I've even got the solo records out here. I love it. I love how you have them all arranged. So perfect. And just to yeah. let everybody know, all those solo, rec solo records, they all have the posters in them, and they also all have the order forms, too. So Wow. Yeah. So I when are, when are you going to BCLT those to me? <laughs> um, be on the lookout, Gary. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep going out every day. You, you never know when it's going to show up, Gary. Yeah. So. But by the same token, don't hold your breath. Exactly. <laughs> and... 
do you guys know which one of those was the hardest to find in in the in in good shape? Peter Chris? No. Ace. Ace. It was Ace. Ace was it's the hardest. Ace. Was, they got beat to hell because people played the hell out of it. Yeah, Ace was the hardest one to find in good shape with everything inside of it. Yeah. Yeah, I just had to buy a, a new a new one of it. Yeah. What's up, Josh? Not much, man. How are you, bro? Good. <laughs> I feel like I haven't seen you a while. I know I talked to you yesterday on the phone, but it's good to see you face to face. So, oh, thanks, man. Good to see yeah. you too. Can't wait for you to visit. It's gonna be fun, man. <laughs> All right, All right so Aaron for that turn. sidebar. <laughs> I think it's Aaron's turn now. Yes. All right, number yeah. six comes from Rock and Roll Over, Mr. Speed. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Just sounds. You know, I just love the. It's just a little different for Kiss too. I like kind of. The, lean towards the ones that have a little bit different sound. And uh, I just love the guitar in it. And it's just, I don't know, something about that song just kicks me every time I, I hear it. So Mr. Speed, my number six. Absolutely. That was, that was the flip side of the Hard Luck Woman single. Hard yeah, I remember because I bought it. It came out before the album came out when I was a kid. And uh, so I used to you know go back and forth playing those two songs until the album finally came out what awesome. a great single that's like come together in something but kiss style yeah yeah yep. and you know what's weird about that album is i love that record and but i very rarely pull it out to listen to it and what's great about that album is it followed destroyer and they went back to the more rock sound and i think that no. was actually recorded in a uh airplay hanger yeah that's yeah thank you but it's a cool record. Yeah, it's great. All right. Uh, my, next, my next one was something that Aaron already mentioned, uh, and it's Watching You, which is, I love the guitar riff and Watching You. Uh, it's another one of those songs like She, where it, lyrically it's, it's more, uh, it's not <laughs> complex, but it's, it's a driving song. And what I really love about the song was uh, back in the days with VHS, I used to have this VHS of Kiss at this tiny club, you know, and, but you would have thought they were playing in an arena, you know, they, they still did the same act in a tiny club. And, um, with, when watching you came on, it was just so intense. I used to rewind it and watch that, that song over and over again. Absolutely love it. It's always been one of my top 10 Kiss songs. So was that a black and white show at the Coventry? Yeah, exactly. I think they have that on Kiss Exposed. They put that. They might even have watching you on that. And oh, wow. on the and on the Kiss, um, what do they call the um, those DVDs they made? They put that whole concert Kissology yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want they, those Kissologies. Kissologies. They're yeah. great. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah. They are. yeah. That's all. I love that on Kiss Alive. You know when Andy goes, mm, everybody's here. Watching us. Yeah. And he goes in that stream, you know, the, yeah. the end of, yeah, that is great. That's awesome. Isn't that on a live three as well? Or not? Uh, watching, I thought it was like a heavier, like a different version on there. Uh, yeah, they do oh. it on a live three also. And, and the sound, it's really cool. It's just, I love that too. All right. Well, my number six is going to be off an album that people don't regard necessarily that highly, at least in terms of their early albums. Um, but for me, it's probably my second favorite after the solo album. Um, I'm talking about Dress to Kill. Um, and I, you know, I love the production on here. The production's uh, a lot smoother than it was on Hotter Than Hell. Um, but I don't think anybody's mentioned this song yet, but I'm going to go with She off of here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel a we all deja vu. It, um, yeah, no, but I, I love she. I love just the the way the riff. I mean, it's a killer riff, and you got Pete. You know, running there, new. It's. I don't know. I'm sorry. Like, doesn't get any better than that on that album. Um, I, and I'm kidding. I know you guys already talked about it, Chris. Everybody, um, all of us have picked she so far. Um, so hopefully you have it in your top five. Um, otherwise, no, <laughs> no, no, really. Yeah, I'm a loser. 
<laughs> well, right. I consider, well, I consider, I consider that a Wicked Lester song. <laughs> they well, have flutes in there, though. So. <laughs> yeah, they took out the goddamn. I'm sorry, flutes. does that say Wicked Lester on there? <laughs> Listen, Jeff. I've got Dress to Kill too, okay? <laughs> but and I'm going to pick a song off of Dress to Kill, but it's not going to be she. Okay, mm-hmm. well, I didn't realize that was a uh, Wicked Luster uh, album, but no, your point is well taken. <laughs> it doesn't the, matter. It doesn't I, matter. It's a great. It's a it's heavy a, song. I love a it. A good song is a good song. Yeah. Um, and you guys have already talked about it already, so I'm not going to go into any great detail about it. But um, you know. I, I almost moved it down just so we could have had that whole, oh, you'll never guess. It's my number eight also, but, yeah. You know. Chris, the three of us, the, th- the rest of us all had it at number eight. So. Well, I, I feel really left out right now. <laughs> well, Jeff, Jeff could have moved it. He easily could have moved it to number eight. So we would have had all of us doing it, but you know. But I didn't because I wanted to maintain the integrity of my list. I'm not going to be changing stuff up at the last minute. Well, listen, I'm I'm now going to make it my number one. So. And listen, <laughs> listen. If Josh can pick a goddamn song off one of the solo albums, I can pick a Wicked Luster. So we can pick a Wicked Luster song. I was wondering if anyone was going to pick something. <laughs> What'd you pick, Josh? What do you think? Uh, well, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, New York Roof. No, I did rip it out. Oh, rip it this out. This song okay. about heartbreak. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because anybody who's watching right now, when we came up with this idea, I picked two sides of the coin off of Unmasked. And Gary's like, yeah, Chris, that's a great freaking song. But that came out in 1980. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> that's why I didn't tell you guys I was going to pick one from the solo album, because you would have talked me out of it. Yeah. No, I, I was just close <laughs> to pick Ozone for mine. For my yeah, that's a great one. Number 11, Ozone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, OK, uh, number five, Sticking with Dress to Kill. And this is like a really simple song. But it has these odd changes in it, and it's getaway. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I just love that song, man. Even though it's like, da, 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 da. you know, it sounds like it's not going to be much of anything, but then it kicks in, and the drums are great, and it's got a super cool Peter Chris vocal. It's an Ace song that he wrote. You know, at this time, Ace wasn't confident enough to sing it, and it's also got that almost like carnival bass line going in it you know when the when the verses are going in uh i feel like gene simmons is kind of an underrated bass player because he has a lot of really good bass lines that flow through these songs that don't you know they're not just following the natural chord progression of the guitar they have their own like you know like paul mccartney and i'm not saying he's paul mccartney or anything but you know he did that that type of things in a lot of those beatles songs and I think this is an example of Gene doing that. And I also, you know, it's it's got this, you know, early rock sound to it. And then Ace has this, you know, super echoey balls to the wall guitar solo in it. And it's just great. And then they end it, you know, with it, you know, down, down, down. It has like a more menacing sound at the very end of the song. And it's really short kind of like you know we talked about rock bottom but it's just great i love it get away one of my favorite kiss songs well the the interesting thing about kiss is the fact that you know their template for success or at least you know the group that they wanted to kind of model themselves after was the beatles because of course Mm -hmm. gene and paul were huge Beatles fans and so you had you know i mean obviously peter didn't write um that much until the late 70s but you had, I mean, three solid songwriters. You had Paul, who obviously was the, the main songwriter, but you had Gene writing songs. And you had Ace, who wrote some fantastic songs during the 70s. So you had like a, a three-headed beast there that was writing amazing material. And I mean, Ace eventually started singing his own songs. But, you know, that's something that, you know, Led Zeppelin didn't have that. Black Sabbath didn't have that. You know, it's something that I think made kiss unique 
in that way where it's like yeah well we got paul bringing songs to the table we got gene bringing songs we got ace um i mean they really i i think um you know that speaks to just how versatile they were and how talented they all were that um you know ace's stuff in, in many ways was as good as the stuff paul stanley was right oh, yeah well and the right. thing is with peter he you know yeah he's not a good songwriter at all but He's a cool singer, you know, I right. mean, so you had him, you know, like Ringo Starr singing songs, you know, that he didn't necessarily write, but, you know, Ace writes a song and says, man, I can't sing this. Peter's like, hey, man, I'll sing it, you know, and does a great job of it, so. Well, let's not knock Peter because he's my favorite KISS member, Gary. I'm not, I'm not knocking him. <laughs> I just <laughs> gave him a compliment. That's the thing. Hey, that's the thing that when Peter was not in the band anymore yeah, and you had Eric Carr and Eric Singer, who, yeah. you know, as far as from a technical standpoint, obviously much better drummers than right. Peter Chris, but they lost something because Peter used to sing, you know, I mean, he was a good singer. He always had some songs that he would sing his, you know, think of those backing vocals he does on Kiss Alive. Yeah. And those different screams and stuff that he does. Uh, he brings a song like Nothing to Lose. He brings that to life. And they miss that because, you know, I mean, Eric Carr could sing, but they hardly ever, you know, let him sing. And, you know, they did let Eric Singer sing on these last two Kiss albums that they put out. But, you know, I mean, it was never the same as like what Peter Chris had going. So they, they definitely lost something when he was not in there. Yeah, they still had great drummers, but they didn't have that personality. In the band. Yeah. Well, well I guess I can imagine anybody else singing Hard Luck Woman. I can't imagine, you know, yeah. Dean or Paul singing Rod that Stewart. song. Right. Yeah, the only other Except person I can Rod hear Stewart, is right. Rod Stewart. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. I also like Peter's uh, drumming style. He had sort of a, he brought like an R&B flavor to his drumming and kind of it was looser, you know, um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought I like what he added to Kiss. Well, and I love Peter's acting and Kiss meets a Phantom of the Park. I mean, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just yeah. It's so <laughs> emotional. And I mean, he was the like actor of the group very clearly. Um, yeah. But anyway. Well, I think when, pe when people put down Peter Chris's drumming, they're always, you know, I think they're thinking more of like when they came back for the reunion. Yeah. And he hadn't been playing for years. Yeah. Aaron can tell you, you know, Aaron's a drummer. If you haven't touched drums for years, it takes something out of you. It, it hurts yeah. uh, when you start to oh. try to play again. You can feel it. You know, it, it, you, when you are hitting things, it goes up your arms and, that natural instinct that Peter played with and just the energy and everything wasn't there anymore. You know, I mean, he had to relearn how to do that. So he wasn't the same drummer. He's not a trained drummer at all, you know, but his feel like what you said, Chris is all through those first six kiss albums. And I think there's certain songs that he has on some of those kiss albums that I think they're great. I think he does a great job drumming on it. So, right. And Anton Fig is a hell of a drummer, too. Anton he Fig is. is an amazing drummer, yeah. yeah. Anton rules, doesn't he? What'd you say? That Anton rules, doesn't he? Yeah. Yes. And Bob, that Bob Kulik is an amazing <laughs> guitarist. Also. He is. He is. Or was. Whose turn is it? It's your turn. Mine. All right. Well. Uh, the drum intro, speaking of drums, the drum intro to this song, da 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 My for my favorite kiss album, again, I'll say it, it's the title track, Love Gun. Uh, there's just certain songs that scream the sound of kiss, and Love Gun is one of those songs when you hear it, it's just it's a kiss song, and down to Paul Stanley's delivery, his vocals, the arrangement of the song, they. They just had a knack for writing uh, just a great hook. And I wanted to say something about Paul Stanley's writing. I read somewhere where, where when he would demo the songs before they would record them, 
they didn't really have to change the demos that much because his his demos were so good and he he had realized the songs almost to the point of like they could have just recorded them then and there so when the rest of the band listened to the demos they basically just cut the song as is uh paul stanley was he he just he envisioned these songs from the beginning and um you know he's just a great songwriter underrated songwriter just like gary was saying gene is an underrated bass player um but love love gun just it's a killer song true i was like all in bounds in that way what'd you say he was like pete townsend that way with his demos you know the demo would have like okay this is everybody's part yeah, and the demos didn't sound all that different from what you got on the record, obviously, you know, but Pete Townsend's no Keith Moon when it came to drumming, but right. anyway. And I know we're I know we're not talking about 80s Kiss, but if it wasn't for Paul Stanley in the 80s, Kiss would be done because Gene was fucking sleeping with Cher and doing other crap. And Paul Stanley, you know, had his nose to the grindstone and he was just taking Kiss. Yeah, you know. Gene wanted to be a movie star in the 80s, right. and he was less concerned yeah. with the direction that Kiss was going in. Yeah. But but yeah. But I will have to say I, I like Peter Chris better than Keith Moon. Absolutely. And I'm just gonna ask, I'm wondering if anybody picked uh Then She Kissed Me off of here. I talked about it. No, we mentioned it. <laughs> okay. Aaron said he liked it. <laughs> I like it too. I don't mind it. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I don't mind it either. Too. Yeah. Out of their '70s music, I think "Then She Kissed Me" and "Any Way You Want It" are their two worst songs, and I like them both a lot. So yeah. I love every one of these yeah. songs. So, all right, my number five—it's been talked about. Amazing song, "Rocket Ride." Yeah, my favorite Fraley song. I absolutely love "Rocket Ride." Uh, that guitar in it is just amazing. His solo and just the, the guitar, even just right from the beginning, that down, 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 that's how it builds up. And uh, yeah, when I was in high school, we had a, a friend. We used to drive around during lunch break and all that during school. And he had an eight track of this, and it was the, it only played two songs. <laughs> it <would only> play <laughs> Rocket Ride and Larger Than Life. So we heard those songs over and over and over. You know, like partying, doing all kinds of weird stuff. You know, and so those songs are embedded in my mind like no others. But Rocket Ride is my number five. And it easily could have been my number one because I absolutely love it. Yes. What's interesting because Chris's copy of Alive 2 looks a lot in better shape than yours. I've had this <laughs> since the I've had this since the mid 80s. This yeah, like yours is I, 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 I don't know. It's just something about Chris's with... copy. It just looks a lot <laughs> in, in better like shape. No more. I, yeah. you know, I take better care of my records than Aaron does. Yeah, yeah I'm, is, like, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But look at Gene there. Nice I know. Isn't that like? Picture. Isn't that just like terrifying? That picture of Gene on there, like holy shit. Yeah. My, my copy of Alive Two is the same one I bought when I was twelve years old when it okay. came out. Yeah, I think and I took the only one here was buying just seventies albums in real time. <laughs> Now, Gary, when you went to Hawaii, did you happen to have a tiki doll that you brought back with you? Like the Brady? Yes. With me. Yes. Me and Greg Brady. (laughs) No, but you know what's funny? Since we're talking about Kiss. So at that point, you know, I was just kiss, kiss, kiss everything. And uh, so, like, I remember going there and, like, everybody I'm meeting, I'm trying to convert them into the Kiss Army. (laughs) <laughs> and I I wrote up I made up this picture of I, I drew a picture of Gene Simmons and I remember they had like this park at this place because I was visiting I had relatives that lived in Hawaii that's why you went I had an uncle that was in the Navy he was stationed there so anyway they had this park where all the kids went and in the bathroom I drew up this picture of Gene Simmons and I on the bottom, I, I made it so like it had these little tear off sheets. And I said, sign your name here if you want to join the KISS Army. Right. <laughs> so, like, That's fantastic. I, and I had on what's funny is I went to a luau and I had the the tattoo uh, on my arm because, you know, it came with those tattoos. And I put one on my arm at that time. 
and they took me up out of the crowd because they had like these uh you know they had women doing the hula and then they had like you know young girls doing it too well they came and grabbed me out of the audience because i was this young kid and i remember her looking and she goes oh you've got a tattoo (laughs) (laughs) i go it's not real you know (laughs) i can rub it off right now (laughs) of course now i wish i never used those tattoos but when you're 12 i mean what do you, you know, obviously you're going to put them on. Yeah. Well, I want to say something too, just about Gene Simmons. Who would have thought back in the 70s, as sleazy as Gene Simmons could be, as unabashedly sexual as Gene could be, who would have thought that Bill Cosby would make Gene Simmons look like Michael W. Smith, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like in retrospect, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I like the fact that we're doing a, a kiss video and somehow we reference Michael W. Smith <laughs> only, <laughs> only on this. Channel. That's a first. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. So my top five are all interchangeable. At some point, they each were my number one kiss song. Uh, my number five was uh, mentioned already. It is a song written by Ace Fraley and it's parasite uh it's just such a fantastic song it's heavy i do love the anthrax version uh but i love the kiss version just as much um so i won't talk much more about it because you guys have already mentioned everything but parasite number five well my number five pick has already been picked this round this is my number five pick i am going with love gun off the love gun album Yeah, I mean, just great songwriting. It's an epic track. It deserved to be the title track. Paul Stanley and all his glory. Fantastic album. Fantastic song. You know, just... I mean, that just, like, sets the stage. Like, well, plus... something majestic, even though it's about a love gun. Those poetic lyrics. (laughs) Yes. I really love you, baby. I love what you got. Let's get together, mama. We can get hot. But I will say this. Of all the bands who respected Kiss, Rush respected Kiss. Rush went on to Kiss. And yeah. Rush, Rush understood what Kiss was doing. And Getty Lee will say to this day that I think he is a Kiss fan. And you can't get two. I mean, there are two different types of bands, but rush respected kiss and they they realized what they were doing well didn't getty yeah. lee have surgery to have his regular tongue replaced with a cow tongue <laughs> he did actually yeah, yeah and actually in hemispheres they were going to include a gun but they knew it it just didn't go <laughs> <laughs> didn't go along with the theme of hemispheres so yeah i like the story because like you know you know like chris was mentioning those guys used to tour together yeah. They were always on the, on the packages. Rush was opening up for Kiss. And, you know, they they saw how Kiss worked the crowd and everything. And they realized, this is what you got to do, you know. And I like the story of how when they were touring together and Rush had their early release of Caress of Steel. And they played it for, you know, for a couple of guys in Kiss. And they're like, uh... What the fuck is this? <laughs> they, they, they didn't get it at all. They're like, we started wondering if we'd done the right thing. <laughs> what I was, love Caress of Steel, by the way. One of my favorite Rush albums. Yeah. Well, and Alec Lifeson started spitting blood during the Necromancer when they would play that live. You know, he got into the habit of, you know, doing that. So I personally think if Farewell to Kings was marketed with a crown on the inside that folded out that you could put on your head, that would have sold more copies. Like what, you got a Burger King? Like a Burger King? Yes, thing? yes. <laughs> have it say Rush. Right. Farewell the King. See the crown for kings? So. <laughs> <laughs> I had to explain it for some people. Probably one of the greatest albums of all time. It's my favorite <laughs> Rush album. Yeah. For good reason. Yeah. All Who's right, we're on number four. I think four we're back to Gary, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 
I'm kind of surprised that Aaron hasn't mentioned this, but you know, maybe he still is. I might be wrong. Number four. This is <laughs> this is number four. Uh, still it's another ace, another ace song, Hard Times nice. on the Dynasty. Nice. Man, that was a song. I, you know, when that one, that, you know, listening to Dynasty, and I, I love Dynasty now. I really do. But the first time through as a kid when it came out, um, I remember being slightly let down because the side four of Kiss Alive 2 and then, you know, some of the stuff on the solo albums, I was thinking, oh, my God, Kiss is going to come back and make their best album. It is going to be so rough. You know, Ace just made this tremendous solo album. And Paul's album is great. Gene has some cool stuff. Peter's is different. Uh, you know, I mean, he'll have something on there. And so when the first time through hearing it, I was kind of like, hmm, I don't know. But the song that did kick me in the ass right away was Hard Times. Because that is such a standout track. It's got weird timing to it. And then, of course, you know, now I know Peter Chris wasn't playing on it, but I remember hearing that at the time thinking, wow, this has got to be a hard song to play on the drums. This yeah. is just weird, but it worked really well. And it's like Ace telling the story of his youth. You know, I mean, he actually writes a song that's about something. And he's talking about, you know, hey, when I was a kid, man, things were rough and I was out, you know, getting in trouble and getting high and the police were chasing us and everything. It's a hard times, but it made me what I am now. And it's got another cool guitar solo in it. It's just an awesome song. And I was like, I wish the whole rest of the album sounded this way, but it didn't take me that long. So I warmed up to it. And now I love it. I love, you know, magic touch, like you were talking about and, and all these other songs on dirty living. I think that's great. But Hard Times is the one that really, really hit me right off the bat. It's the Kiss version of the Beatles in my life, really. It really is. <laughs> They're all going to the park and spacing their heads out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I mean, I said Black Diamond was a day in the life, so. <laughs> Making all these Beatles comparisons, which does make yeah. sense. I mean, they, like, like Jeff said, they were big Beatles fans. At least Pete, Pete, uh, Paul and Gene were. They wanted to be the heavy metal Beatles and have everyone have their own personality like the Beatles and have their own stuff, their own fans. Yeah. And they did it. They're the only band that's really done it since the Beatles like that. Yeah, where everybody knew every person. And Cher was kind of like Yoko Ono. <laughs> <laughs> Except she could sing. Yeah. <laughs> and she was hot. <laughs> Touche, Gary. Uh, Touche. <laughs> he's actually nothing like it, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's up? Chris. Me? All right. Well, since we're talking about the Beatles, I'll show Kisses, Sergeant Pepper's Destroyer. And uh, you really like Myla Mazine. You yeah, like the I'm way saying. the wheels roll. You like my seven inch leather heels and going to all of the shows. But do you love, do you me? love me? Yeah, love that song. It's, an, it's another great Kiss song. I mean, you know, you see it live. The whole audience is singing along. Oh, yeah. It's got cheesy, cheesy lyrics. But I mean, it's just Kiss. It's Paul Stanley. You know, I love I I like I really like this album. It's not my favorite Kiss record. I get it, but I'm gonna pull the song Do You Love Me off here because I still love it's got that killer drum intro and it's just a great oh, yeah. Like yeah. the whole <laughs> Well you can almost yeah. hear Paul I mean, you can almost hear Gene Simmons in his mind going, I don't give a fuck if you love me. What are you talking about? You know? <laughs> yeah. That's not Especially. what this is about. I didn't become a rock musician for love. Right. Chris, uh, I'll tell you that. That's a great song. That album. The drums, yeah. Go ahead. That's my favorite song off that album. And I'll tell you that when they played it on Unplugged, I was shocked. 
Because when I sat down for Unplugged, I was not expecting that. And it was just like, that version of Unplugged makes me love that song even more. Yeah. yeah I mean, song like, did that. They were just, that yeah. was such an amazing live performance. I still, I, I honestly think that is the best Unplugged performance anyone's done. It's just, it's amazing. I like but, it better than any. Well, then you haven't heard Rod Stewart's Unplugged, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Duran Duran might do a better one, but. <laughs> I mean, I can understand why this is a lot of people's favorite Kiss record. I mean, Detroit Rock City, King of the Nighttime World, God of Thunder. All right. Great Expectations. Eh. Flaming Youth is a great song. Sweet yeah. Pain is really good. Then you got Shout It Out Loud, Beth, and then Do You Love Me. I mean, this is a strong freaking record. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, too, like, there's a whole generation of people, you know, that are like my age group, that that was their first Kiss record. Yeah. You know, that's when that came out, that was the first Kiss record I bought. And, you know, I would come home after school. You know, I'm like in sixth grade. And, you know, I'm putting the headphones on and rocking out to it. That right. was my Friday. That was my Friday ritual. Right. I would come home, I would play that, and it'd be like, yes, it's the weekend. And the whole thing of that starting out with all the, you know, the newscaster and everything, and then they go into Detroit Rock City. I mean, that that just started everything. So that album, yeah, it's not my favorite Kiss album now. Yeah. But, at, you know, it's what started it. It's what started my love for Kiss. That's and my a favorite. whole bunch of other people that are, in their 50s you know it's my favorite kiss album artwork i'll say that i mean it's totally you know kiss wanted to be superheroes and i think that cover i mean that's kiss superheroes right there i think it's awesome and i think you know considering the album the studio album before that was them dressed in business suits um you know they'd come a long way (laughs) Yeah. yeah So. They all borrowed those suits and they were all a little too small. The suits, the guy that they borrowed was a little smaller than them. So that's why they looked yeah. a little weird. Yeah, well, Peter Chris, Peter Chris was the only one who actually owned a suit. The rest of them had to borrow Bill of Coins um, yeah. suits. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway. And, and one more thing about one more thing about Destroyer, it's really unique because it's not a concept record, but it really feels like one when you listen to it. it kind of flows yeah. together like a concept record and i really actually love that that outro at the very end of it no one really talks about everyone's gonna have a rock and roll party it's this really weird creepy thing they do at the end it's really unique love that thing too so. yeah me too all right so my number uh where we're at four <laughs> yep yep I'm from the self-title for the first time and it's black diamond Everything you guys said about it, I loved how Peter, uh, Paul Stanley starts it off with the, just the guitar and then Peter Chris, amazing vocals in it and a song. And it is the day in, uh, the, day in the life of the Kiss uh, catalog. And it has, you know, Paul coming into the end. And I even like all that, that weird outro they have on it where it oh, just keeps going. And, oh, yeah, they start slowing slow down. Yeah. 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 Then the drums oh. come up, but I, I I don't like not hearing it without that. You know, some people like to cut that off, but I love it. So oh, Jack yeah. Diamond, my number four. I love the outro, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> my number four, <laughs> my number four was actually credited to that Paul and Gene wrote it together. I don't know how true that is, and it was a hit. Um, but you know, it's one of my favorites. Let me go, rock and roll. Uh, oh, yeah. I love the the alive version, obviously, <laughs> as most people probably do. Uh, but I just never get sick of that song. It's fantastic. Uh, it's a it's a party starter. You know, like Gary said, coming home on a Friday, you play it, you're ready for the weekend. To me, that's a weekend song right there. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, let me go rock and roll. Now, JC, yeah. JC, you've shown a, a few songs off of Hotter Than Hell. Is that your favorite Kiss record? Nope. Uh, my favorite Kiss record is the self titled. I mean, the first one. Yep. But it's close. (laughs) The first three. First of all, Chris. (laughs) Uh, I'll tell you, uh, 
uh, eight of my 10 are from the first three albums. Yeah. All right. Well, my number four, and so we're in our top four. Three of my top four are off this album, the debut album. This is a killer debut album. I mean, I'm sorry, but like, how the hell oh, do yeah. they, I mean, I don't know. It, it's really, I mean, the fact that there is so much solid material off here, and I know, yeah, the Alive versions are better, but still, I mean, they had to be great songs. If the, the songs weren't great, the Alive versions would just fall flat. But this is just such a solid debut album. And I'm going with Cold Gin off of here. And I love, I mean, it's just so, I mean, it's almost charming in a way. The fact that, I mean, this is a band, um, you know, they got goofy makeup on. And I mean, they're, but they're, they're just, there's such an earnest something about these songs where, I mean, technically, you know, they're probably not, I mean, this isn't like, you know, Deep Purple or Black Sabbath or whatever, but I just, you know, the riffs are just solid and there's not like, I don't know. I mean, I hate to say it, it's just something, it's almost like the Beatles Please Please Me where, yeah, it's not like the most, technically the most sophisticated kind of an album, but the songs are solid. The songwriting is great. The riffs are great. There's just an organic quality, you know, in this early stage in their career. And Cole Jen, um, I mean, it's interesting. Obviously, the irony is that Gene Simmons sings it and Gene Simmons doesn't drink alcohol, but it's an Ace Freely song and Ace Freely didn't have the confidence back then to sing it. But it's a solid song. There's so many, you know, and I'm speaking for this entire album, but, you know, it's just sort of like the, the way with all my favorite songs off this album is they're just great, gritty little rock and roll songs. And they were a rock and roll band. Strip away the makeup, strip away all the showmanship and the bravado. They were a tight, awesome rock and roll band, you know? And this was before anybody gave a shit who Kiss was. It wasn't like they had this audience that they were playing to. It's like, here we are, we're writing fantastic rock and roll songs. You know, there's no BS at all, no bullshit, you know, on any of these songs. And that's what I think is so great about it is, you know, we're like, we're, this is us. You know, we love the Beatles. We love rock and roll. We love the Stones. And yet they make it their own. And I, I love Kiss's debut is one of my favorite debut albums just because it is a great rock and roll album. If you never saw the cover and you just heard it, you'd be like, yeah, this is awesome rock and roll. This is like the faces. This is like the stones. This is, you know, like just, you know, organic rock and roll. And Cole Jen, just that riff at the beginning, I think is fantastic. And I love that debut album. Um, I so. agree with everything you said. And I'm going to say <laughs> this. You're saying it's an organic, stripped down rock and roll album. I'm going to venture to say the next album that came out similar to this album that struck us, that struck the same chord was the Ramones first record. I think it, it's that stripped down sound that every once in a while you just need. And uh, I would say that this is very similar to that first Ramones record in terms of being a stripped down rock and roll record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't even have to be a fan of heavy metal. Like, you don't have to be a heavy metal fan to dig it. I mean, you could be yeah. Yeah. just a classic rock fan and, like, put that on and, like, shit, these songs are amazing, you know? I mean, you yeah, know, and I'm not, like, trying to throw shade on any, obviously, any of other Kiss's 70s albums because they're great. But just the fact that that's, like, their debut and you've got songs that are still in their repertoire today and still stand up today you know we're talking 1973 i think when this album came out or 74 whenever it came out but anyway you know that early you know i don't know there's just something about it that is just so refreshing and charming and um it's just a solid solid debut album yeah i i agree i think um 
honest, like, it seems like the, the people that are like a little bit older than me, um, they never cared about Kiss in a way. And I think it's because of the makeup. Because, you know, how can you tell me, oh, you know, yeah, I like uh, Savoy Brown and I like Fog Hat and Nazareth and Uriah Heap and all the, well, Uriah Heap's different, but, you know, all these other different kind of basic rock bands, but yet you don't like those first three Kiss albums? I mean, the songs on there totally hold up to anything else, you know, hard rock albums that were put out at that time. I think those people, you know, like say in their early 60s or whatever, when that stuff was coming out, they're just like, ah, look at these guys in the makeup. And I, I'm just, I'm not going to pay attention to them, you know, because right. those are such, all three of those records are just solid. And the debut, I mean, it's just chock full. It's the greatest, it's the greatest I mean, hits. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's basically a greatest hits. And then by the time Kiss Alive came out, I don't know. I don't know how anybody who was old enough during that time couldn't have heard that. You know, like if if I was 16 when Kiss Alive came out, I'd be like, oh, my God, this might be one of the greatest things I've ever heard. I mean, it's just amazing. I, it, I just feel like it's totally biased when people, you know, well, I never really got into Kiss. I never really cared about it much. It's I think it is the makeup that turned them off. You know, yeah, you and can almost... later. If somebody says they don't like Kiss, then they don't like rock and roll, pretty much. Because that's I almost feel roll. that way. <laughs> yeah, right. sometimes you know. Yeah. Well, even the grunge art, like even a band like Pearl Jam. I mean, tell me you can't hear the similarities between Alive and theme from Love theme from Kiss. I mean, those riffs are yeah. so you know similar. Um, you know, I mean, well, Kiss yeah, that all is, those all those guys in those bands were all Kiss fans when they were kids. You know, Kiss helped get them into rock and roll. So, you know, they were all all fans of Kiss. Yeah, you I mean, know, when Pearl I saw Jam, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, yeah. Nirvana, they were all Kiss fans. And and a, um, another person who was a Kiss fan that nobody that a very pe few people know is Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks yeah. tried to make his stage show like a Kiss show. And um, yeah, I mean, Kiss has gone on to influence so many different bands and so many different genres of music. Yeah, he said that he uh, he wanted to play Kiss type music, but he couldn't sing that style, so he had yeah. to go country. Yeah. yeah. All right, number I think three. It's not you, Josh, right? Or oh, is it? No, I'm it's sorry. Gary. Is it's it Gary? Gary? Okay. Yeah, because yeah. you just went right. I'm after you. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Uh. Number three is, in my mind, this is kind of Kiss doing a Led Zeppelin song, almost. And this is another one off of Rock and Roll Over, Making Love. Yeah. Uh, nice. You know, that, that beat, that rhythm in there. I could have been off of Led Zeppelin, too. I, you know, I mean, I just think it's great. I love the way the guitar you know, da, 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 she says, stop, baby, go, you know, boom, the drums yeah. come in. That's just great. I mean, the, you know, some of the lyrics are a little uh, on the, they don't fit, <laughs> you know, nowadays, as far as how things are, but, uh, you know, you take it for the time period, and I just, you know, that's just a great song. Uh, I think Peter Chris keeps time very well in that song what he does is really simple but he it fits right right into the song uh the guitar is great the vocals are amazing on that song it's just that's just a great kick-ass rock song making love nice that's a heavy heavy riff on that song too oh yeah yeah, yeah. all right well my number three we've been talking about this record and uh, this could have been the first song. This probably was the first song that people heard Kiss do because it was the first song on the album, and that's Strutter. And uh, I just love the song Strutter. Still in their live set, like we were saying before, this is basically a greatest hits. Yeah. And um, 
that was like sort of like the song that said, hey, we're Kiss. This is what we sound like. This is what we look like. And we're going to kick your ass. And if you watch those early videos of Kiss on the Kissology DVDs, they just commanded the stage. And they they weren't taking any shit. All four of them were up there and they were, like Jeff was saying, a tight ass rock roll band. And, you know, Strutter proves it. I love that song. Nice. Yeah. This is very fun. <laughs> yeah. Number three is Strutter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just love Paul Stanley's phrasing in that song. There's so much emotion in his vocal uh, delivery. Yeah, it, it's just amazing. And I'm gonna start out with the drums, and then that guitar riff comes in. And it's always been one of my top three Kiss songs. It's uh, just you know the first song from their first album sets the stage, like you said. Strutter well, then, number. Three. And I love the guitar riff after he goes Strutter. It's just killer. Yeah, Strutter. Yeah, there we go. So all of my top three are off this album, um, and my number three was mentioned by Jeff, and that's Cold Gin. I love Cold Gin. Uh, I I just love he's like the landlord's gone. I'm down and out. He's like painting the scene, you know, the cheapest stuff will do. Uh, I know that Gene sings it, but it's such an Ace song. When you when you know Ace wrote it, uh, you, you can just envision him singing it back then. Uh, I love it. And uh, yeah, so Cold Jim, great pick, Jeff. Thanks. That's, re that's really killer. He did that on the Origins album with him singing it too, so you could finally hear that. Yeah. yeah. I need to get those Origin albums. I don't have them. They're, they're really good. My number four is Strutter. Yes. Now, Maybe. I could have picked Strutter 78 from Double Platinum, but I'm going <laughs> to go with the original without the disco beat, uh, whatever, on it. I mean, whatever. But, I, you know, and one of the reasons I like it, I love that they borrow the same rhyme from the Beatles' Girl, where it talks about, you know, looking good and understood, that rhyme, which is the same rhyme from the Beatles' song Girl, Off Rubber Soul. But yeah, just a solid riff. Um, I mean, yeah, don't tell me you don't like Kiss if you're a hard rock or a classic rock fan. You know, it's no different from Bad Company or any other, you know, I mean, it's just a solid, solid rock and roll song. And it's like, and now like, here we are and we're a force to be reckoned with. Um, and Strutter is just a solid classic a uh, bit of uh, just rock and roll, you know, and that's at the heart, you know, strip away the makeup, strip away the platform shoes and the costumes and all that. I mean, at their heart, you know, they're just a cool rock and roll band at the end of the day. Very cool. The three of us have started at three. Yeah, it's we're on the same wavelength. Now I feel <laughs> now I feel back in the mix again. <laughs> back in the Chris Groove. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, Gary, you're number two. All right. Well, since this has been mentioned, when I point to you guys, sing your part of this oh, song. Jesus. Oh Jesus. All right. <laughs> Wait. This Out is on the streets for a living. Which is only begun. Ooh. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Black Diamond. Got you Black under Diamond their thumb. Will always be one of my favorite Kiss yeah. songs, whether it's the version on uh, the debut album or Kiss Alive. They're both excellent. I love the way it ends on the debut album. I love the way they end it on Kiss Alive with the explosions. And I, you know, and the last that you know, you got Paul singing and then you got Peter singing. And I love it at the very end where they go, woo, and he goes, black diamond, da, 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 and they go into the explosions. And it's just, man, that is just a perfect song, Black Diamond. We talked about that. So yeah. Well, 
a lot of people don't realize that Kiss was really into the Chinese Zodiac. Um, she's a dancer, a romancer. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn and she's a Cancer. Well, actually, that isn't the Chinese Zodiac, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, Dress to Kill, Jeff, I'm showing the record. Come on and love me. Yeah, like Gary was saying, if you were 16, you listen to Kiss. If you didn't listen to Kiss, you were getting shoved in a locker. Bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> like, you were not cool if you didn't listen to Kiss in the 70s. Now, I'm a youngster. I'm only 47, Gary. I know. But <laughs> I was born in 74. But And that's actually, isn't that the year that the debut came out? Yeah. Yep. But I was cool, even though I wasn't listening to Kiss. I don't even know where I'm going with this. But bottom line, <laughs> you were getting shoved in a locker if you didn't listen to Kiss. And my number two is Come On and Love Me. There we go. Kill, Kill them all. You were either getting shoved in a locker or your head was going in a toilet bowl. Yeah. And getting flushed. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, kind of amazing. We put out the debut and Hotter Than Hell in 74. You know, those two amazing records. I know. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how bands used to do that back then. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean... Who didn't listen to Kiss? Losers. I don't. Wanna, I, don't I don't know. Exactly. You're dead to me if you don't listen. To we Kiss. don't associate with those folks. No. I was lucky because I never grew up in a stage where Kiss was uncool. Because uh, by the time I got into Kiss, I was so young. The other kids in my class didn't know who Kiss was, so I right. was like introducing them to Kiss. And right. then when I went through middle school and high school, they had a resurgence with those '80s albums. Uh, yeah. the, the teenagers loved Kiss when I was a teenager. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, there were some people that were into real heavy shit that maybe didn't yeah. like Kiss. But for the most part, Kiss was never not cool. Yeah, and I just want to let people know out there, because I know everybody thinks I'm cool, because I am. But there was a time where I wasn't cool. I was listening <laughs> to Falco, and I still <laughs> love that record. But I also listened to Huey Lewis and the News and Cindy Lauper. Those were some of my first records. But before I got into Kiss, just putting that out there. Rock Me Amadeus. Hey Rock Me Amadeus. It's a great song. Yeah. I also like yeah. Raspberry Beret by Prince. Yeah, that's a good one, too. All right. Prince lost two. me a little bit. When, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say Prince lost me when he did that Batman song. But go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bad guys. Lost you, huh? <laughs> yeah, you lost me a bad dance. <laughs> My number two, Josh has already talked about it. From Jeff's favorite record. <laughs> Love this <laughs> album. And, uh, you know, there's just something about this song with the overdub guitar at the beginning. And then kicks into rock bottom. And it really bothers me that they changed that on... Um, double platinum where they put the intro on she it's just it's weird to me and uh, rock bottom my second favorite kiss song everything you said about it that guitar at the beginning i mean you know that's just so amazing that ace fairly guitar yeah. intro and then it just kicks into one of the heaviest short songs ever but it's just it's just an amazing song and uh well, you know it's rock bottom and, and i like that better yeah. than ufo bottom which is a great song but kiss is rock oh, bottom and amazing Texturally, I like the embossed cover on this. Yes. It feels good on your skin. It puts me in <laughs> zen like. Yeah, I like to do this as I'm listening to Dress to Kill. So I, haven't, right. I haven't even been drinking tonight. So. <laughs> All right. My number two uh, is once again off this album. And. Um, it's Deuce. I love Deuce. I love yeah. the Alive version. I love the opening line, get up and get your grandma out of here. You know, <laughs> I can tell you that <laughs> I was a, a, a younger Josh Costa once. I was dating mm -hmm. this girl. She walked in the room. We were at this party. Walked in the room, locked eyes with me, gave me that look like, let's get out of here and you know what's going to happen. That's the equivalent of Deuce. <laughs> it's some hot chick. <laughs> looking at you saying let's leave so we can screw 
it is just fantastic <laughs> <laughs> in every possible way. <laughs> I thought it was about a bowel movement. I don't care. <laughs> I think uh, it's about telling your woman to get these people out of here so you and me can have sex twice. There we go. Deuce. Yeah. I was wondering who Jim was, but <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't care who Jim is. Listen, I'll at, this, this year. at this point, <laughs> I just want an Uno. You know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there we go. Deuce. All right. Gene Gene actually said that that song was his way of saying Deuce was that the guy is worth twice as much as the woman in the relationship. He said the guy's doing most of the work, making most of the money. He's worth a deuce. He's worth twice of what you're worth. Wow. I didn't know it was a sexist song like that. Now it's ruined for me. <laughs> I didn't either until like a couple of years ago where I, I well, read some interview of him talking about that. I'm going to continue to believe it's about having sex twice. That's yeah. what I always assume too. Yeah. <laughs> deuce, deuce is their glass onion. <laughs> get up and get your grandma out of here for god why is your exactly. grandma here you yeah, get grandma out of here come on <laughs> um well my number two has already been talked about um i'm gonna go with parasite off the hotter than hell album just got a funky little groove there um it's an ace freely song and I think I got like three Ace Freely songs in my top ten. So um, yeah, I, I mean, you guys have already talked about it, but I, I love it. It's like boogie rock, you know, and it a little funky, but yeah. That means you need to get an Ace Freely tattoo. That's what that yeah. means. Mm -hmm. I also have three Ace written songs in my top ten. So, number one, here we yeah. go. I got three. Also, okay. Uh, okay so my wouldn't. number one, I want to mention a couple things first before I get to it. One, uh, I think UFOs rock bottom and Kisses rock bottom are a tie. <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm sorry, Aaron, but man, UFOs rock bottom. Michael Schenker's guitar solos and that. Jesus, God, that's some of my favorite guitar stuff ever. So those are yeah. those are ties for me. Those are those are great songs. The other thing is, uh, we were talking about Kiss and like you know whatever in the seventies. And if you weren't listening to Kiss, you were probably getting beat oh, up no. and stuff. So you know, like I was just in you know sixth grade when I started listening to Kiss. By the time I was in high school, nobody gave a shit about kiss um because like you know i was i think i was in junior high maybe when unmasked came out nobody cared about that i remember i remember things were probably going downhill when i was talking to this guy he was kind of like a jock kind of character and i'm like well what about kiss you know and he's like yeah i like i was made for loving you you know that that's really <laughs> cool and I, i'm like well what else do you like well, you know, I like the village people and you know, like whatever, what, you know, something else. I'm like, hmm, that's not good. And so, like, you know, when the elder came out, you know, me and like my close friends were like, oh, God, this is great. You know, this is such a cool album and it's got some rocking songs and it's got these weird songs on there. But like nobody else outside of me and my friends knew anything about that album. And, you know, then I, I saw them on the Creatures of the Night tour. And, you know, they were not cool at that time. Uh, that was their last one in makeup. That was the first time I got to see them. I saw them at the Toledo Sports Arena. It wasn't even full. Uh, there were, you know, there was plenty of room in there. But that album started to bring them back. I was, I DJed. Our, our high school basketball dances and so I started playing I Love It Loud off <laughs> of that and of course you can't dance to that song but people still got on the floor because of that huge drum beat and how they danced to it was somebody some guy would get a girl on their shoulders 
and they just kind of went marching around to it. So like, you know, I was always flying that kiss flag, even when nobody gave a shit about kiss at that time. But then by the time lick it up came out and asylum, they started gaining fans back. Uh, anyway, the reason I'm saying all this shit, is because my number one song has been talked about and I can't really add any more to it. <laughs> and that's Parasite. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, you guys all mentioned it. You all talked about it. Aaron made the same comment I would make. It's got one of the greatest riffs of the 70s, I think. It is so catchable. Uh, the way Gene sings that song, man, you would think he wrote it because it, it's just fantastic. I love it everything about that song and so, you know i'm sorry but that's one of those songs these people who say eh, i don't like kiss or whatever i defy them to listen to that song and not say yeah man that's a great kick-ass rock song right it's perfect it's my number one parasite baby nice. parasite dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. well my number one comes off <laughs> of this record <laughs> Her name is real. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Now, wait, I can't name a song. I can't pick a song off of Unmasked. Oh, that's I, can't, nice. I, can't, I can't do She's So European. No. All right. No, my <laughs> number one is. In a basket. <laughs> I Stole Your Love off of Love Gun. Stole love that love. song. This is my favorite. I know I've said it like four or five times tonight. This is my favorite Kiss record. And I Stole Your Love is just an amazing song. I wanted to pick other songs off this. I wanted to pick Plaster Caster. I, I love Got Love for Sale. I love Christine 16. But, um, you know, I Stole Your Love is just just killer kiss. Yes, it is. Yeah. Another one of the best riffs of the 70s. Yeah, that's a yeah. great one. That that was I, I went back and forth on trying to get that into my list so bad. That's a good that one. Such a I song. stole your love, stole your love. Ain't never gonna let you go. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> what a great way to start that record off too. Wow. What'd you say? Yeah. That's a great way to start that record off. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's a, this is another strong album. I mean, Love Gun, Got Love for Sale, Tomorrow and Tonight, Christine 16, Almost Human, Plastercaster, Shock Me, I Stole Your Love, Hooligan, which is a great Peter Chris song. Oh, yeah. Right. I am a hooligan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go to school again. I used to love when Gene would do this kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love them, leave them. Leave them. <laughs> love them, you know? leave them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it's weird. I didn't have anything from Destroyer, nothing from Love Gun, but if we went, would have been top 20, there would have been five or six songs from those on there. Yeah. I love those albums. Yeah. It's just albums as a whole. Love Gun's one of my top five easy, but it's just individual songs. I like a couple others here and there a little better. So my, so my number one has been mentioned by Gary, <laughs> but only Gary. And I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. Larger Than Life from uh, Kiss Alive 2. It's my favorite Kiss song from the 70s. And to me, that almost sounds like you're going to take Black Sabbath and mix them with the Beatles. It's got that heavy intro and then that chorus. My love is larger yeah. than life. Beatlesque. It's almost like a Black Sabbath Beatles song. <laughs> and I've heard that song so much back when I talked about that when we were uh, driving around. My friend had the eight track and it was larger than life and rocket ride, right? And we just kept listening to them over and over. And so I just became, uh, you know, I fell in love with it. So that's my favorite kid song from the 70s. Hey, I have a question for you, Aaron. Do you uh -huh. do you think that's Peter on the drums or not? On Larger Than Life? Yeah. It kind of has his swing. He has that kind of swing feel. It kind of has that, but I don't know. It's, you know, who knows? They could have a studio musician in there. They were doing all kinds of weird stuff at that time. It doesn't matter. I, I've goes listened, to the and I just love I've that listened to that song different times because you know you've heard different things yeah you know it is peter it's not and there's certain things about it when you you, you try to listen to it and, and it it does sound like peter but then every now and then there's just like a that bass drum every now and then i'm i'm just not completely sure but i i like to think it is i just think they had them really mic'd up 
you know, and everything. And I don't know. I, I totally think it could be him. It almost has an Eric Carr drum quality to it, which is that booming drum style, like in I Love It Loud on that. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people say there's no way it's him because it sounds so big. But I just mm -hmm. think that's the way they recorded it. You know? But it is big, but it also has kind of a swing. It's just kind of yeah. a different, a really different song. Like I said, it's a Black Sabbath Beatles song. <laughs> I love that description. <laughs> so wait, nobody, nobody else picked "I Stole Your Love." It was. It would have been on my top twenty. It's just yeah, it would have been my top twenty. You guys are all wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> it's probably my number eleven. Oh. It'd be my number twelve, probably after. Um, I remember I said another, another one. I put it eleven. I can't remember what it was, but it'd be my top twenty for sure. Like I said, so I we, did a top hundred of this easy and just whipped it right out in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Before I do my number one, my favorite Duran Duran song is definitely Come Undone. That is by far easily my favorite Duran Duran song. Uh, but my number one Kiss song is a masterpiece. I, I totally agree with you guys that if you had to sit down a rock fan that hated Kiss, Parasite would probably be the song that I would play because it's the most straight up, heavy, kick-ass rock song. But if someone said, what is Kiss's masterpiece from start to finish? It's Black Diamond. I don't think there's anything that comes close to the complexity of that song. Like you guys said, the intro, the outro, two different singers. Um, how, you know, Paul sings at the beginning, but then, you know, I remember listening to it the first time and then Peter Chris kicks in and you think like, oh, this is cool. This is different. And I obviously heard the Alive version first, you know, but um, yeah, the complexity of that, the different... Um, levels that you're going through in terms of of a musical journey um it is you know like we said many times and chris said a day in the life um i just think it's an absolute stone cold masterpiece i think it's one of the greatest songs ever written uh you know by far any band should be proud to have that song in their catalog that's my number one and you you can put that album up against any other album in the 70s and that would be a good fight because kiss would mm -hmm. put up a good fight that first album is killer yeah i think about you know a lot of times people say what is the greatest debut album of all time and when they talk about hard rock they always say appetite for destruction and i'm not trying to take anything away from appetite for destruction because i love that album but to me put this up against appetite for destruction play it song well, by song the other thing too is if it wasn't for the kiss album there wouldn't be an appetite for destruction right the only one that comes close i think i think kiss is better the only one that comes close is van halen's debut it's pretty close to that for oh, me. van halen's debut is is in that running too i think kiss and van halen have the two best debuts of all time those two yeah yeah because even led zeppelin won and again it led zeppelin won is, it's a masterpiece but it's not my favorite led zeppelin album and i would i would pick kiss debut over Led Zeppelin one. I would too. That's a that's a tough one too. <laughs> I don't know. I would but I, agree. I, I yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I, mean, I mean there's a lot of great debuts, but for me it's Kiss and Van Halen. Yeah, I'm Good. I'm picking I'm picking Kiss over Zeppelin one. Just gonna say it. Chris, would you pick uh Kiss's debut album over this debut album? That's a <laughs> tough one. That is a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. No, but even I mean, think about Russia's first album. I mean, that's that's a hard rocking album too. I mean, that would be a tough because uh, Russia's debut is really good too. Working Man's on there. You know, finding my way. Finding my way. But I'd still think I'd have to pick Kiss over that. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So I wrote the opening for him back then. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, you guys are out of your fucking minds because I can't <laughs> believe nobody picked this one. Uh, my number one is off the debut, Kissing Time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Close Black Diamond out of the water. I don't know what you're talking about, Day in the Life. Kissing Time is a day in the life. What about Love Theme from Kiss? Yeah. <laughs> but seriously... <laughs> Seriously, uh, Black Diamond is my number one. But you're right. I mean, and I, you know, if you're going to say like a, I mean, and so you go through this album and you're like, oh my God, like this is 
a, a fantastic debut album. And then you get to the final song on this album and it's Black Diamond. It's like, holy crap. You know, and they, they wait till the end to throw like that masterpiece on there. And you're like, it's kind of like the beginning, you know, it's the acoustic. And it's almost like they tried to recreate create it on I Want You from Rock and Roll Over. But it's just, it, it goes to so many different places. It's got all the things when we talk about like classic rock and roll songs, the things that we love about it. And I've gotten into Metallica recently. And one of the things I like about them is like the tempo shifts and, you know, all the different places that they go to. And that's, I mean, the same can be said about Black Diamond. It's just, you know, as jaw dropping as the rest of that debut album is. And then you stick Black Diamond on the end and you're just like, holy crap. Like I give up, you know, this is one of the, I mean, yeah, I'd be hard pressed to, you know, name, you know, in 1974, a better debut album. Um, I mean, it's just, it delivers the goods it's you know and then you have black diamond as the grand finale on that uh album um but that's my favorite kiss song of the 70s i mean and i love so much of kiss of 70s work but it's hard to you know i mean and i'll do respect to everybody who didn't have that as not their number one song but i know it was on your list but for me yeah i mean it's i'm a beatles fan so i can't say well it's better than a day in the life but as far as an album closer um you know name me a better album closer than black diamond won't get fooled again is the only one that comes to mind right now but um you know still it's like holy shit yeah um for a debut album a debut album album closer Give me another album. Give me another song that's as good as Black Diamond from a debut album, an album closer. You cannot. There's no way. Well, what closed? Um, what closed Iron Maiden's first record? Um, I can't remember. I can look it up here. Is that you, I- sweetheart? I don't know. I got it right here. Well, no, I'm just. I, I'm. I'm going to. I'm. I'm challenging jeff here i mean i was the asshole that said kiss's debut is better than zeppelin one so i mean, I'm not, I mean like when i think of like my favorite yeah, debut albums there's man. not a single one that has a better closing song than black diamond i mean the yeah. cars debut dire straits debut even appetite for destruction iron maiden ended with iron maiden but yeah that's, that's a good, good. closing but you're right. I I think Black Diamond is a better song than Iron Maiden. That's pretty close. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Really... yeah, but Black Diamond is a freaking yeah. amazing song. I, I'll take, I take Kiss. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now now we're we're done with our top ten list. I'm going to put everybody on the spot right now. What is during the same time period of the '70s? What is your favorite Kiss album of the 1970s? Aaron. I've always said it's a tie between the, the debut and Hotter Than Hell. I just can't. They're both so close to me. All right. Then, you have, you have to take one, for me. I'll, I'll just say the debut. If I go out on a limb. Debut for me. Well, if you I already knew mine. Mine's Love Gun. Uh, That's great. Mine's Hotter Than Hell. Yeah, I'm going to go with the debut just because I think I had more songs off the debut than any other Kiss album. But Yeah, I'm going with the debut, too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I actually have three off Hotter Than Hell. It's the most from my top ten. Yeah. Now, Aaron, Aaron, if, if we're not talking, we're just talking Kiss overall, Kiss's entire catalog, what would your favorite album be? Mm. Probably still the debut. Okay, Chris. Probably, it's close though. I said I this. Know. Well, I said this in the text the other night, and this might be a strange choice, but it, it's probably because of the time that I grew up in. But I love Crazy Nights. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great record. I'm, see, I was going to say Asylum's really close for me, and even Creature of the Night, and uh, you know those those three maybe, and then the the first three, Asylum Creatures. Those are my top five, and they're about really close. 
But I also listen, I listen to Unmasked a lot. And I'm not kidding. I really, really like that album a lot. I that should have that should have been a bigger album for them. Yeah. And uh, I'm not I'm know, not saying unmasked is my my unmasked for me is is top five as unpopular as a pick as that is. Um but yeah, I I I love it. I know people shit on that album and it's sort of like a running joke, like, oh unmasked, ha ha ha. But yeah, but people also shit on Never Say Die by Sabbath, too. So yeah. The albums Garrett. that I listen to the most are Kiss Alive, Unplugged, and Creatures. Those are the three that I listen to the most, even though this is my favorite. It's because Alive just has, because I love the first three so much, and it encapsulates all that. I love the 80s materials, and Unplugged does that. And then Creatures is just such a kick-ass album. So those are the three vinyls records that I listen to the most in terms of Kiss. And I... I think that's what's tough when you ask that question, you know, what's, what's your favorite? Because it's like, you know, I might, you know, realistically, when I look at all the songs that are involved and everything, I would probably pick their debut over Hotter Than Hell, but I'd listen to Hotter Than Hell more than I do the debut because I've heard those songs so much more. And like, you know, Hotter Than Hell has songs like Coming Home and Strange Ways yeah. on it uh that you don't hear all the time and going blind and you know so i love that just like i uh, you know i probably listen to the elder more than i do some of the other big kiss records just because you don't hear those songs as much same way like you guys liking unmasked so well you know i mean it just has a different feel to it and I, you know i love listening to that record when i'm in the mood and then crazy nights you know, I mean, I, I I got that album there a while back and I was listening to Crazy Nights more than I was any of the other Kiss records. It's just yeah, but Love, on Gun, your Love Gun has hot chicks on it, Gary. <laughs> and with with Kiss faces, even, yes. <laughs> yeah. Kind of creepy, but good. <laughs> you know what's annoying well, though? That is one of my favorite album covers. I mean, come on. What's annoying about people is that if you I'm on Spotify right now. And the number one Kiss song is I Was Made for Loving You. Again, it's it's a good song. And the second song is Rock and Roll All Night. But it's like, I, I like those songs. But people, there's more to Kiss than those two songs. Right. So. And I guarantee, you know, I Was Made for Loving You, I, you know, I can listen to. But I guarantee everybody here, you probably never listen to Rock and Roll All Night. I'm I guessing. Did, right. Just, skip over it you know what i mean because i i know yeah the only time i hear that is if i happen to be on you know comes on the radio and my wife wants to hear it or i'm seeing kiss in concert but otherwise i'd never play that song it's one of those songs to me where i got to that point but i've come back around or now i'm like really enjoying it again especially when you have a couple oh. of beers it really really uh, turns it around a that. little bit yeah <laughs> Every song on this album is awesome. And I know this has yeah. I Was Made for Loving You, but this has some really great Ace songs on it. Yeah, not oh, yeah, really. Well, and for even... people who love two-hour videos, we have <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah. nailed this one. Um, but what I'd like to do is, if you guys are okay, I'm going to end this video, and then anybody would like, you know, if we just have a KISS discussion after this video, anybody will maybe we'll post that one separately, but Thank you guys for joining in. Great list. A lot of fun talking kiss. And we'll be back next week. All right, it was late.